How's it going everyone? This is Travis from Travis Larve Your Photo and again welcome to my YouTube channel and I'm really excited today because I'm about to show you guys and review and talk about one of my favorite cameras that I own currently and that is the Canon AE-1 35mm film SLR. So before we start I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Um, I am recording in my room right now. It is a little dark. I don't have a whole lot of uh, external light that can really help me. Um, it may be a little bit noisy too just because there's a lot of uh, noise going on with the TV outside. Um, but it's no problem. We take care of it and we got good setup going on over here. If you're going to be distracted by anything, I at least provided a nice picture of my dog Vader in the background for you. So <laughs> uh, anything you choose to pay attention to, it's all good with me. So I just want to take a quick second to talk about this camera. Uh, this camera was manufactured in 1976 to 1984. They sold over a million units um, of this camera, basically making it one of the most popular film cameras uh, of that time and definitely of all time, uh, in my opinion. It was the first 35 millimeter film SLR to be equipped with a micro processor. Um, this is not fully mechanical like some cameras are during, uh, during that time. Uh, it does run on a battery, which is a six volt battery that goes inside this little door here. Six volts you can normally find at Radio Shack um, or online. So if you're gonna find it, the code is PX28A. And uh, those are pretty pretty easy to find. Um, this camera has a couple cool features. It has shutter range from one one thousandth of a second to two seconds, as well as bulb mode. Bulb mode basically means as long as the shutter is held down, uh, the camera will stay open exposing the film. And as soon as my finger comes off the button, closes up, you're done. Uh, bulb mode is normally recommended for anything longer than two seconds, which unless you have crazy steady hands, you have to use a tripod. Um, good for landscapes. Um, good to have a remote capable release too. I don't have that on here right now. I have a little uh, red soft release button, which is nice. And uh, nothing in the film right now, but the shutter sounds really cool. Um, I like that a lot. Uh, the lenses that I bought with this camera, um, I bought this camera as a whole package from eBay, which consisted of the body, a 50 millimeter f1.8 lens, a 24 millimeter 2.8 wide angle lens, and then I have a 70 to 150 millimeter 4.5 lens uh, telephoto. And all of those work great. Um, they all work for their own uh, certain situations. Um, I normally have the 50 millimeter on me. Uh, all the time because it's pretty much the equivalent to your eyesight. So um, this thing works really well. Um, this is a this is the Canon FD mount, which was the lens type that they made for the older cameras. So um, you cannot use these lenses on a newer digital camera like the Canon 60D that I'm recording with right now, um, unless you have a special adapter. But red dots line up with the other red dot just like any camera, and you twist and you hear the click and you're ready to go. Uh, this is a SLR, which means single lens reflex. Single lens reflex cameras allow your subject to come into the body, reflect off an internal mirror, hit the, the second internal mirror on this prism, and then be reflected back into your eye through the viewfinder. What I like about SLRs is that it's basically what you see is what you get. So if I look through my viewfinder now, and I focus on the Canon 60D, I know exactly how my photo is going to be composed. I know how the depth of field will look, and I can definitely see the internal light meter, which will tell me if I have a proper exposure or not. Um, the depth of field is also cool with SLRs because you can preview the depth of field with this little button right here. Right now, I have the aperture at 2.8, but if I turn it up to f11, the viewfinder is going to get darker because there's not as much light coming in because the aperture blades are getting small but everything from foreground to background is becoming in focus. And aperture is a subject that we will cover in a later episode, as well as shutter speed. Um, I normally shoot Kodak Tri-X 400 speed film, uh, which is black and white. It's the standard, it's the best, um, it's my favorite. And I don't have any in there just yet, and I was going to show you how to load that up uh, in just a second. Um, what I love about this camera is that it's it's a great camera to learn on. It really helped me to develop my photographic technique by forcing me to slow down. It really taught me how to choose my shots carefully. It allowed me to really be more disciplined with 
my photography. And even though 36 shots isn't a lot compared to anything you can get on a digital SD card, 36 shots on a single roll is still a lot. And you really make sure that you think, should I use a, a frame uh, of my film for this shot or should I save it for something else? So that's the kind of mindset you have when you use film is you're really a lot more picky and you're a lot more choosy with film. Um, again, you can get these on eBay. They're a really great price. They're really good build. Um, surprisingly, this is all plastic. This feels like metal, but um, it's a it's copper that's been uh, painted over the plastic with a with a metal finish. But man, this thing's really solid. It's also very light, so that's nice. And quite honestly, it's just cool to carry around. Um, I've had a lot of people uh, ask me about this camera, uh, even just when I carry it around. Um, sometimes I won't even take a picture. I'll just have it on me because I never know when an opportune moment for a photo might come up. Um, and it's a little more fun than just whipping out an iPhone and uh, taking a picture with that. So um, I love this camera, it's it's my baby. I've had it for a little over two years now, but I would take this camera everywhere. It's a great vacation camera, um, to be honest with you. So I again, I don't have any film in there just yet, so I'm going to show you now how to load standard 35 millimeter Tri-X into the Canon AE-1. So what you do when you're going to load up the Canon AE-1 is on the left side of the body, there is a film crank that you pull up. A lot of standard SLR um, cameras, uh, 35 mil, have this similar feature. So inside here, this is where you're gonna put your film. This is the shutter curtain. This is something that you wanna make sure that you don't really touch at all because it's a really sensitive fabric and uh, any type of dust can get on your film. Um, which you obviously don't want. And then over here is the take-up reel that is attached to the winding lever. Um, and this little reel right here, this has a couple of sprockets that you fit into the holes of your film. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this on its side and I'm gonna open up this box of Tri-X. Again, this is Kodak Tri-X 400. This is the standard in black and white film. It's 400 ISO, uh, really good daylight, and it has awesome grain. It has awesome uh, blacks and whites. So we're gonna pull out the crank to its top, and we're gonna sit the film just like that. Close that up, and you should feel it on a set of uh, sockets. You're going to extend the film over and then on the camera itself, you can actually move the reel in any place and you're gonna fit the leader of the film into one of these little slots. And uh, it takes a, little, takes a little bit of practice, but once you get it, it just becomes second nature. Um, the take-up reel itself also has little sprocket keys that can fit into the holes. So I'm gonna fire up the shutter again so we can wind that on there. And you wanna make sure that it's nice and tight and fit the film into the reel. And so as you can see now, it's on the reel. It's gonna be nice and tight. And then on this flap of the door, that's the pressure plate, which keeps the film uh, nice and firm and square up against the shutter. So we're gonna close that up. I took off my rubber eye cap because sometimes it gets in the way. Um, so we're gonna fire off the shutter a couple times and then right below the shutter is the frame counter so we're gonna fire it off a second time and now it's at zero fire it off one more time and now we're at one so we are ready to go and we're ready to go out into the world and take pictures with a uh, Canon AE-1 so thank you again for watching this video on Travis Lauer your photo and uh, this is about the Canon AE-1. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come over here and uh, watch my first video. If you haven't seen the channel introduction video yet on the uh, homepage, that was a video of just uh, introducing myself and that was actually shot, filmed, and edited by my girlfriend. And I think she did a great job in kind of telling my story and just getting uh, my passion and my objective out to the world. So I uh, hope you guys like the video. Subscribe below and uh, more videos will be coming out in the future. So uh, keep those cameras clicking. See you soon.